So now we are recording for you. Um, right, so you mentioned there's clear differences between the yeah. French oh, version of me. There's that, there's the uh, RSV, uh -huh. and the there's, um, there's uh, pop, um, mm -hmm. which, pop. Uh, mm -hmm. which you probably haven't heard of. Yeah, you, you sent me the link, yeah. and I, I read through the link. Uh, okay. Including the collaborators and so on. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it's uh, it's a new thing. I mean, the, I put the website online a few days ago. Ah, okay. I, I, in the few hours I had before my flight. Mm. Uh, well, it's a pretty good website for a first touch in short time frame. Yeah, for for three hours of coding, uh, it's pretty decent. It's very decent. <laughs> it's a good boilerplate that you have used. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let me grab a computer just in case we need that. Yeah. Okay. Which is roughly uh, the same as, as France, uh, as far as I understand. Yeah, but the, the, what interests me is the, the rest of the population, because uh, if you have 70 or 80%, it doesn't mm -hmm. change that much. What matters is, um, in France, we have, I think, uh, if my numbers are correct, 17% of the population who never use a computer. That's right. Uh, and that, that is probably not If they are three years old, I wouldn't worry, but <laughs> if they are not, uh, they're adults, then of course it's a case of concern. Um, for, for Taiwan, we have developed what we call assistive um, civic technologies, meaning that, uh, for example, for one of the deliberations around Taipei social housing distribution, the mayor said that the stakeholders themselves must determine the agenda. But the stakeholders are, of course, homeless people, mentally and physically handicapped people, uh, single parents, people living with HIV, and, and so on. Like, 
they, they could not get landlords to rent to them even if they had the money because they were stigmatized or something, right? So by saying, you know, these people must um, determine the agenda, it of course doesn't mean that we, we need to set up a website and ask all the Aborigines and everybody to go on their website. That would be a uh, catastrophe, right? So so what, what they did uh, in the happy city, and I uh, observed and felt a little bit, is that uh, we use the traditional rolling survey method to, to discover stakeholders, to draw their family diagrams, uh, like in, in standard social workers fashion, and then try to go go beyond the proxy that, that purpose to speak to them, but actually reaching them. But the problem is, of course, we can't get everybody, uh, like the, the one who were paralyzed and so on, to, to get into the same city hall for discussion, right? So, which is why we, we still use technology, we use live streaming, we use uh, 360 um, um, uh, video, we use uh, like uh, VR, sign, VR, yeah. sign, sign language interpreters, real-time captioning, and also for people who can only type and not speak, there's uh, the, the other way of channel as well and so on. And these are the, the of course, the, the very basic uh, to, to get them to understand that it is really the mayor's will to, to be bound to the agenda that was set by the stakeholders and not just random general public who may or may not understand what, what they're about. And it's quite magical because after a few, this kind of virtual or real face-to-face -face discussions, they come to see each other as, as, as comrades instead of someone who, who wants a slice of pie bigger than they are. And we even get um, like a Aboriginal mother who said, you know, those uh, autist people, they, they deserve this more and, and, and they, they are willing to, to um, take their advice elsewhere and so on. So, so it, it does have a, a good coherent effort. But what I'm saying is that and technology- it unites the will. It unites the will. And what I'm saying is that uh, technology is a uh, necessary but never a sufficient foundation. And uh, for things like these socially disadvantaged people, the technologies must behave in an assistive way. That is to say, to enable them to speak for themselves instead of uh, creating technology as a proxy to speak for their will, which never works. Good. Um, quick, quick question. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of online voting? And I'm mm -hmm. saying voting like for uh, you know, mm -hmm. general elections. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think voting for policies uh, is is easier online because it's easier to have a uh, fact-based or evidence-based discussion on policies. I don't know about uh, voting about people. Um, voting about people, to, in, in my experience at least, uh, is seldom based on an actual um, real connection to the person. Of course, you can have any number of Q&A forums and so on, but it doesn't really mean that you really know this person. So, so I, I'm much more in favor of, of voting to determine the relative priority of policies. That's, so that's the idea of both. Uh -huh. that even if you vote for a, a party or a person, mm -hmm. uh, the agenda sets only part of it will correspond to what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, then once once they get in power or mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. they have to uh, you know they, they have to change their agendas to fit mm -hmm. with other politicians. And in the end, maybe you can elect someone mm -hmm. who will implement none of the policies you wanted. Mm -hmm. Right, it's an intermediary uh, problem, we, we know this very well. Yes. But um, uh, about the very, the, uh, not, not, the, uh, not the, the, how it's, uh, how it's used, the, whether it's for policies or for people, the very interface, the fact that the function voting could be online, uh, do you think it, it would be dangerous uh, with regards to, well, first, has two big problems. The first is that the 20% people who don't really have mm -hmm. uh, internet access might not. Mm -hmm. They might not participate. I mean, there are ways around that, right? We've heard that there are countries who's considering automatic teller machines, ATMs, as a as a voting booth. That that increases the the reach of, of the internet a lot. If if you can use an ATM, you can yes. you can watch the the policy description on the ATM screen and then press buttons to vote. And it also doubles as a cheap, uh, not exactly secure, but cheap um, authorization and authentication mechanism and so on. So what I'm saying is that uh, if we introduce technology and the technology strictly speaking expands people's uh, reach, for example, people who cannot go outside can now also
the village, but it doesn't take things away from uh, the existing people's mechanism. It's like it's not like we're, we're taking those paper ballots with away anytime soon, right? So as long as it's complementary, I don't see any dangers in introducing new vehicles, but I wouldn't say it replaces the original. Well, the, the, the problem is that uh, you do have the security mm -hmm. uh, critical point mm -hmm. for that, uh, you know, the, the, what happened in Estonia. Mm -hmm. the, their voting system mm -hmm. is catastrophically vulnerable mm -hmm. because there's the use of it. Well, they, they say that they have a, a few defenses, right? You can always uh, override your previous votes. You can always go to the physical booth and override your online votes. And so on. Yeah, but even then, uh, you, you you remember uh, the team that I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. What I'm saying is that it's of course it has its security flaws, but it was designed so that uh, like flaws in one layer doesn't completely yeah. uh, turn over the legitimacy of the whole system. Uh, it was designed that way, and I'm not saying that we're adopting the Estonian system. Yeah. Because the, the the thing is that um, that's actually to answer some of your questions mm -hmm. about LSD. That's one of the nice features it's an online system mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't have to be online mm -hmm. and uh, I I mean the, I don't think you have time to read the documentation on that because mm -hmm. it's long mm -hmm. um, yeah I have some some basic ideas yeah there, there's sampling there's this very interesting fake tickets um, there's this washing of <laughs> like um, basically making it it's not pay to buy votes uh, I got that main point. I haven't gone through the mathematical descriptions. Well, the, the mathematical, the really nice mathematical mm -hmm. feature. Are you familiar with uh, three ballots? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the mathematical feature is that it's mathematically secure mm -hmm. that you can hack the system. Mm -hmm. And if you manage to hack the system, the best you can get, mm -hmm. uh, and that means, and it's hard to get mm -hmm. it, but the best you can get is the identity of the people who voted, mm -hmm. not what they voted for. Yeah, and you yeah. can't change the results. Right, exactly. Because yeah. it's end to end by Yeah, I, 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 so I understand that. At much. least we got the security part yep. uh, down. Um, the thing that we tried uh, recently in, in practice, and it, it, it actually works quite well, is that um, you, you, you can reach the people who don't have internet because we were in a conference mm -hmm. and a lot of people there need to have internet. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and the thing is that you can vote through a proxy. Mm -hmm but without actually telling them what you voted for mm -hmm. and, what, and while being able to verify that they voted mm -hmm. later. Yeah. So you really, uh, voting by proxy could be a, mm -hmm. a very nice uh, way to uh, access the, mm -hmm. the last 20 or 30%. Mm -hmm. and, and that's good because then you don't have to trust the ATM machine dealers. Yeah, right. you, mm -hmm. you just tell the people, well, mm -hmm. if you want, you can vote online. If you can't, you can just you know ask anyone in your family, or even come to the come uh, to the city hall, and uh, anyone will help you vote, and will not know what you voted mm -hmm. for, and you will be able to check that your vote was uh, counted. Mm -hmm. So I think as a way to uh, to do that, it it, it could be uh, it could be the future. But the problem uh, that we have is that. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Because the usual way, of course, it's a sociology problem. The usual way for a high state election is that you get uh, experts from all the parties, and then they jointly uh, witness the, the, the process and, and all the process beforehand. So it's basically delegating the trust to the, the parties, um, like five or six parties. But it, it doesn't quite work uh, if you, like, <laughs> for example, have one large party, one, one medium party. Several small parties. Uh, there's always room for manipulation. Do you know the um, error rate mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the paper ballot voting? I don't know. Because uh, France has uh, one of the best systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we really are secure yeah, uh, yeah. and everything. And in the end, we still have about 10% of mm -hmm. our uh, uh, counting mm -hmm. uh, offices mm -hmm. reporting errors. Right. So, I mean, uh, it, but it's each time one or two ballots, so mm -hmm. it really doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, people really overestimate the um, the ability, the correctness. Well, here we we allow live streaming of, of the the opening of the ballots, of the reading of the ballots, and by individual verifiers. So so that doesn't happen as much. Hmm. Well, that is nice. When did you extend that?
that last election. Which was? Which was like last year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we have that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a little too late to implement it, but that's something we can actually get into. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not interfering with any other countries' <laughs> elections. Um, But yeah, the, the problem is that, um, well, online voting, people could be convinced, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the fundamental of RSV is that you take a sample of people, mm -hmm. you take 10,000 people. That's right. That's what allows you to have a policy mm -hmm. questions every day if you want. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask 10,000 people each time, and they're random, in Taiwan, they would mm -hmm. get one question every mm -hmm. one year, two years, it doesn't matter. You can actually fiddle with it so that people have a reasonable amount. Mm -hmm. uh, like, there's probably a sweet spot before people have election fatigue, uh, but also get not too long away between two votes so that they don't have, um, they're not, they don't feel disenfranchised or mm -hmm. uh, left out. And uh, the problem is, do you think that people would be ready to accept that? The well, they're doing that every day on social media anyway. What? They're doing this kind of discussion on policy on social media anyway, with their friends and their friends of friends. Yeah, but having, but letting mm -hmm. some group of people chosen randomly mm -hmm. uh, choose for the rest. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, like, it wouldn't be a referendum. It mm -hmm. would be... No, but, 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 but of course, the, the, these people's families and friends and so on, of course, will also be involved because these people will ask their, their yes. friends and so on. So it, it still ends up being a, a, a society discussion. Well, that, that, that's the, the goal of, uh, of POP is to say, well, even if we use RSV, which you know, we're considering, mm -hmm. um, if we want to have the legitimacy of 10,000 people choosing for the rest, then the only way to have that is to have the rest inform the 10,000. How do we get that? We get that by a public debate. And uh, you've been using police. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, that's one of the things that's really interesting. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I looked how to set it up. And right. Uh, Identify the principal component of, of a diversity of high dimensional uh, opinions, basically. Yeah. Uh, it was well in practice. It was very well in practice. Scales to thousands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scales to 10,000 very easily. Yeah, the problem is that it's scales to. Maybe we can try that because <laughs> th that would be. Uh, but I mean, I mean, it's 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 the, the visualization is designed so that it, it does clustering and also allows you to see consensus among clusters. And uh, because we the system rewards people who can get more consensus in their groups, and also rewards people who can propose things that are consensus among groups. And because we uh, how does it work? Okay, so so it's. Well, just by virtue of being shown, it's just like oh. Reddit, right? Right. Okay. So, right. So it's it, it, it's really not that magical. Um, the so so for example, this is the the, the UberX case, and uh, yes. right. So so as far as we can see, the first thing it shows is the the global consensus, and we can say that that it's accepted by pretty much every group except for this one, which okay. has a little bit of dissent. And here then, is where I am a yeah. bit sad not to speak Mandarin, but sure. I can read Reddit. <laughs> but anyway, the, the, the point is it's interaction, right? So if you click to a group, then you can see this group's consensus, uh, or this group, which has a consensus that yeah. pretty much doesn't uh, agree by this one, and this subgroup, and then this subgroup. So, and then within each group, you can see its consensus. But the majority opinion allows uh, opinions that are pretty much everybody agrees or disagrees to surface to the top. Uh, and this is better as social media because um, the social media kind to uh, reward things that are fringe, like these or these opinions. They become uh, very loud. Oh, this but this rewards 
the, the measure of yeah, uh, In this uh, diagram, uh, I mean, there's actually a metric in there. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 very easy to to calculate because everybody can propose a, a yes or no question. And uh, yeah, I'm just wondering right. about the, the metric on that graph. Yeah, uh, so, so basically what it tries to do is a dimensional reduction uh, between everybody's point in this high dimensional space and then reduce it so that the principal component of a vector that's most representative of the most divisive point becomes the x-axis and the one most orthogonal to that, the second sub-component sub becomes the y-axis. And that's it. It's very easy. Huh. There's no magic in it. Yeah, I'm just that. I mean, yeah. there is one piece that uh -huh. could be magic, uh -huh. but then it's sufficiently massive. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is that um, how it finds mm -hmm. uh, that uh, biggest vector. Uh, right, the, the source code is there. I mean, it's, it's written in, in closure, I think. Uh, but yeah, I, the, the math is pretty pretty easy to, to, to go through, and it's open source, so... Yeah, I, I, I read a bit, some yeah, documentation, right, but, right, right. Uh, um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, it's a representation of high-dimensional data, mm -hmm. low dimension, but mm -hmm. this is the, uh, is the vector base the uh, mm -hmm. best one. I mean, because, mm -hmm. of course, they have to estimate the, the Basis That's right. uh, through algorithms, which uh, I don't know how they do it, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but it will be. Uh, I mean, is is that uh, basis determination algorithm mm -hmm. legitimate? I mean, it right. seems to work. Yeah, it seems so, to work. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a game, of course. It seems to work. If somebody proposes a new question that polarizes everybody, then that becomes the one of the new uh, factors in the principal component. So, so you can see the group shuffling uh, just by propose, somebody proposing a really uniting or a divisive um, opinion. So it, it's very dy dynamic. When this thing is ongoing, you see everybody's position changing all the time, which has a good psychological effect that first, it's all your friends that's shown here. So, so they're yeah, not your enemies. The yeah. and, uh, so so they, they're not your enemies, they just didn't talk about this over here. And, uh, the, the, the other thing is that it shows that it is possible to have majority opinion even among people who are very divided. Uh, and this mm -hmm. this part is, is the thing that we don't usually see in social media. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, uh, it, it is, it is really, uh, mm -hmm. I am uh, quite uh, in favor of uh, approval systems mm -hmm. uh, rather than ranking systems. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Because, yeah, what happens is that you, you find a consensus instead of ranking the, the, the the best or the, the highest long, ranked. As long as people are honest. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so and then of course these, these are not anonymous votes. If you log in, uh, yes. your position is shown to everybody else. So, so they have a, a kind of moral peer pressure to, to, to vote honestly because- yeah, that, That's, because that's what, yeah. yeah that, their that your Facebook, Facebook friends see it, All right? That, that was the, the, the position uh, mm -hmm. I made in a, in a paper that I should submit now, mm -hmm. by the way. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that you know, one way of getting rid of uh, of the inherent problem uh, in uh, manipulate manipulability mm -hmm. of ranking of um, approval systems mm -hmm. instead of ranking systems is just mm -hmm. getting rid of anonymity. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, are we ready to get rid of anonymity? For 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 cases like this, of course, because it, it's it's essentially uh, you know idea gathering. It's it's brainstorming yeah. stage, yeah. right? It's not decisional, and it's. It's not electing a person, so so for brainstorming, of course we, we can be. The, do you know Do you know um, the, the, the I learned that recently about the, the French um, uh, Parliament mm. that uh, we have uh, the, the people don't have secret ballots mm -hmm. except for a single reason. Mm -hmm. There's a single type of vote where they have secret ballots, and it's to elect the leader mm -hmm. of the assembly for that yeah. day. And uh, it's yeah. I mean, as long as you vote on policies and not people, mm -hmm. it's uh, well, it's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if someone votes on something that and might have been influenced or corrupted, mm -hmm. uh, then at least you, you know that they voted for that. Yeah, exactly. Like you can check. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I see the reason for, for say referendum to be to be uh, anonymous, but for things like MPs or a small deliberative setting, I can very easily argue that it is the 
the process of someone's position changing. Uh, uh, that that yeah. that actually chronicles that person's ability to to have a conversation, uh, rather than just forcing like everything was dark room, the vote was anonymous. You don't even know how the debate went. Yeah, and and uh, I think that uh, for the elected uh, members, uh, mm -hmm. public officials, uh, anonymity is not a good thing. Yeah, okay. so, because they have to, uh, you know, show what they did. Right. It's it's good to have say private discussions, but but when it's binding, it needs to happen in the light yeah. of the public view first. Um, so, so yeah, the the idea behind. Have a, such a platform where people can discuss, mm -hmm. and uh, not just that, but to hack democracy first mm -hmm. by uh, trying to get elected officials, well, getting people uh, to be elected officials for that platform, mm -hmm. uh, who are bound by their word mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to actually vote mm -hmm. the way that the platform uh, was gathered and voted, mm -hmm. and. Uh, one important, like one interesting thing that uh, Geza uh, Tishin, uh, he's uh, the, the person behind the idea, um, is that he says he, he's very interested on that, and I, I find it quite interesting. Is that mm -hmm. the person who's chosen as a representative, who's mm -hmm. elected, um, can debate all they want and fight really hard against the idea, as long as they vote, they, they have the freedom of speech, but they don't have freedom of uh, choosing what they vote for. Yeah, I'm aware of this. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's not. Um, but for that, we need a public discussion. Mm -hmm. we, we need a platform. We had one uh, called uh, for the for the called République Numérique. I know. Uh, are you aware of what? Yeah, uh, and it's not open source. Yeah, <laughs> I, I tried to get them open sourcing it, but they didn't. So we ended up running our own. Yeah. Oh, you wait. You how mm -hmm. did that? Well, the, the, the V Taiwan system was open source, uh, Creative Commons Zero, like yes. public domain from the start. Uh, but we really liked the, the uh, Republic of uh, ability to have like a discussion, a sub discussion uh, to every single line of, yeah. uh, of the, the text. Uh, we, we didn't have that. We had a discourse um, discussion board and we manually kind of. Uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't integrate uh, that kind of thing? Well, that that was before I was was digital minister, right? So, so I went to to France. I, I got to this night of ideas. I think that was uh, last January, um, and then and then knew these Republican numeric uh, folks. They they were just discussing uh, the the Republican numeric bill on, online at that point, yeah. right? So so um, and I saw the system. I thought it was a very nice system, and I checked with the developer. Uh, I think also last year. When we went to the same uh, about a year the, the Nesta event, yeah, uh, in, in UK uh, in the Parliament, where we talk about our respective uh, projects, and of course the Icelandic project about um, they they have this system where the pro and con are are voted or ranked uh, mm -hmm. differently, so that uh, you never reply to each other. Instead, you you choose the best pro argument, the best con argument in a petition, and then and then the debate centers around the best cream of the crop, pro and con argument. So it's two agenda setting, pro and con, this idea. Okay. And the same person may propose pro and con. Um, so, so it's yeah. not a yes or no vote, right? It, it's a vote of ideas. And then, and then, but they were bound so that they must discuss the best, say three, um, pro and three con ideas um, in, from the platform. And I think that's pretty good. Um, so anyway, they, they, this is open source. Our VTOWN system, including POLIS, is open source. Uh, but the Republic of America system from France, uh, not so much. Why? Uh, I don't know. Well, because they have a business model, I think, around selling this to, to local cities, customizing it and something. I don't really know. And it, it is a, a upfront cost to open source something. You need to, to you know, you know, clean the code base or something. I don't really know. Yeah scrub the code base, uh, but, but we did adapt uh, the, the best ideas from the Icelandic and the French system into the next version of uh, Taiwan and join platforms here in Taiwan so that in a few months, the Taiwan petition system will also have this pro and con interface and the Taiwan system 
now has uh, this line by line, section by section discussion uh, built in. We basically rewrote from scratch because we thought, yes, that's a better user experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I think it was the, the people from my lab were quite involved in that sort of thing because mm -hmm. um, for quite weird things, because they were against quite a lot of the mm -hmm. proposals. Um, because it, you know, it put into law that, for example, uh, as scientists, mm -hmm. our work is um, mm -hmm. in the you know, mathematics and such mm -hmm. is uh, we have uh, the freedom to share it however mm -hmm. we want and to put it on archive and such mm -hmm. uh, after I think it was six like months. the open access cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and the people were really against it mm -hmm. for a very good reason, mm -hmm. which is that it went against our current practices, which is that it was open access from the start. Exactly. And. Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah, and yeah, putting it into law because in law you couldn't really put like from the start it's open access, uh -huh, uh -huh. so it restricted our freedoms uh -huh. by or at actually least, or at putting least them it in discouraged in uh, the, your current practice. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I saw that argument online. And uh, there's one part of the, the Republican Ready that was in the Assembly version but was removed from the Senate version, mm -hmm. uh, which is that all the regulations must be proposed. Uh, online for 60 days or so of discussion between uh, the proposing and uh, assembly actually debating it so that the assembly can get you know input yeah. uh, and uh, I think it was ultimately removed but we we enacted it last year so so we got that so the auto regulations in Taiwan now that that was before I was the official minister I was just rallying for it <laughs> but but now now everything must be deliberated online for most of the time, 60 days. What do you mean everything? So all the regulation change. And uh, that is to say, um, things that usually the parliament here, um, they, they look at the regulations change that the, each ministry proposes. And they have uh, a right to basically put it into uh, a hearing or a parliamentary debate uh, for, I think it requires a one third or a majority, I, I don't know, to convert a regulation into a process that's like a law uh, yes. process. Um, and, um, but they usually do it without uh, a public debate period, right? So mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing now is for all the regulation and all the laws that affects, uh, you know, trade, intellectual property, or the, the things like that. But not all the laws. But not all the laws, because the laws already went through this uh, MP debate period. Yeah. The thing is that for regulations, the MPs don't have to, and indeed they, they almost never debate it. And then the regulation takes effect after seven days or, or 14 days. What, what we're now doing. Uh, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure about the uh, respective yeah. domains of what is a law and regulation. Uh, okay, yeah. right. So uh, a law is something that requires parliamentary authorization. Y yes. A regulation is something that has a law already, and then it authorizes the ministry to make some rules based on this law. Okay, it's okay, I see, uh -huh. I see the, the yeah. French terms are different. All oh, right, sorry. But no, no, uh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know how it works. Right, exactly right, right. So, so regulation... The, it's the, um, basically a variation on the implementation of a given mm -hmm. law. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, so for the implementation regulations, the, the ministries did not actually have to ask for the public debate previously. And uh, if they announce the regulation change, usually it used to take effect after seven or 14 days. And within those seven or 14 days, of course, the MPs can say, but we need to have a wider discussion. But they, they almost never say that. Right? Okay. So, so, so this makes it very easy for the ministry to push through changes um, that may, may or may not be a good idea. Yeah. Right? So, so now we're lengthening it to 60 days and mandating that for anything that's 60 days review period, it must be first posted on the online forum. And then the MPs can make an informed decision of whether to convert it into a due process based on the input on the online forum. So which I, I think it's, it's very uh, working very well so far. How many people are um, uh, among the citizens? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, does it have a far reach? Are mm -hmm. people actually participating? Yeah, sure. Um, we had some numbers. Yes, I saw that you were quite good at getting the people to do the thing by making it easy and uh, right. taking a few seconds. But right, exactly. For I mean, how much? 
how many uh, of those regulations uh, give rise to public debate per mm -hmm. week? Right. So, yeah. Um, at, at the moment, we have 114 ongoing regulation debates. So about um, two per day. About two per day, but over, over 60 days. So yeah, more or less. And then there is 127 that's finished. So yeah, okay. around two per day, that would be good. And then um, it's, it's a lot of, of comments, really. Um, I mean, I mean, but it looks like Chinese to me. Yeah, but but I mean, at least you can see there's yeah, yeah, yeah. thirteen thousand replies. Oh well, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm actually curious about the long tail, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it is a long tail. I mean, I mean, the first page is is around a thousand or so, and there's a plateau around hundreds or so. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, you've got maximum, you've got like uh, 10, 15,000 mm -hmm. comments. Yeah. Is that comments or commenters? Uh, comments, uh, but, but also commenters, I think, because people usually just, because the comment is actually very, very time intensive. Most people just vote if they like the idea or not, mm -hmm. which is a higher number, I think. Okay. Taken together, I don't know, hundreds of thousands? Yeah. Hundreds of thousands. The, 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 you still have a potential problem with that, which is, you know, uh, a democracy where the, well, where the ones who are heard are the ones who shout, mm -hmm. because That's basically right. the ones who are interested. Sure. Um, but they're they're not binding in any. No, no, they're not binding, which is yeah. which is why it's okay. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, if you just uh, had a, a platform with uh, binding mm -hmm. uh, regulations mm -hmm. where people could just upvote, downvote, well, mm -hmm. the most active users. Yeah, which is yeah, which is why we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the power still is in, in, in the MPs, mm -hmm. but yeah, the people should inform them. Yeah. Um, we we were wondering about for for talk mm -hmm. uh, about well between just letting the whole platform mm -hmm. uh, choose, mm -hmm. which is a possibility, mm -hmm. uh, but then you know it won't be representative. That's right. It's representative of the members of the party, mm -hmm. which is still okay in a way. But you know, uh, and the other way around is um, is basically to uh, to take a random sample among that, mm -hmm. which should keep the same, but also uh, maybe you know half and half, but half going to the global population. Mm -hmm. Uh, which also has the added impact of maybe pushing some people to join the movement mm -hmm. uh, because they can express their voice and That's great. have an impact. That's great. Um, now, we still wonder how. I mean, I think I think if we could use uh, similar stuff mm -hmm. as uh, police mm -hmm. and all that, we could get a nice uh, public debate mm -hmm. uh, platform if people join it. Mm -hmm. um, but then the question is. Right. If you start with just you know basic asking anything, stepping where you bind by having the most consensus and the most controversial opinions, a guaranteed response from an elected official, but it's not binding in the sense that they will vote according to this. Then this is a softer, right? It guarantees a response, an authentic, long form, maybe a video live streamed response. But 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 that then you can delay the problem. You don't have to solve the, the, the representative problem, right? Uh, but still, it is a way to sway uh, a politician's will because they will hear questions representing the things that they've never considered, right? So, so I think it's, it's a softer bridge than, than jumping to, to, to finding votes. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Do you think that people would be ready It's not that long, but that's okay. when I started working on all those things. Okay. So I couldn't have been working on that longer. Uh, do, you, do you think that people would be ready to accept the legitimacy mm -hmm. of a random subset? For jury, people have already accepted. 
Yes, um, more or less. Although we're going back on that. Oh, you are. Okay. No, uh, I mean uh, every country. I mean uh, countries are slowly restricting the usage of uh, juries. I mean oh. Australia got rid of it. Uh, oh. So did uh, South Africa and. France, I think, restricted mm. their usage to only certain types of cases. Right, 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 of course, the, the non-polarizing ones. But it's funny because we don't have a jury system and we are considering to implement it this year. Ah, so. That's fine. <laughs> uh, you, you, know, you, you know the saying uh, about jury systems, which is that uh, the problem with uh, the jury is that they're composed of the uh, only people dumb enough not to actually get out of it. Mm. And, uh, yeah. and it's a bit sad. <laughs> Right, so, so, so no, we're, we're not going all the way of, of the, the juries doing the decision. There's still a judge, and uh, the, the jury's binding power to the judge is limited, and how limited exactly is now being deliberated in a national deliberation. Uh, so, right, so, so I think it's, it's at least a, a direction we're still in. What I'm saying is that Taiwan's very, uh, very much into experimentation. Yes. And, and, and uh, if the form doesn't work, at least we're talking about how it fails for the rest of the world to see. Uh, why is it that you're so ready to experiment and move forward? I mean, I'm jealous. I'm also jealous of your transit system. But <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, um, I think one of the reasons is that we had press freedom only since the, the 90s. Um, the, the freedom of the press was, was the ban was lifted in and then the first crop of, of media was in the 90s. But in the 90s, it's already you know, the era of facts, the, the era of you know, international real-time news. Uh, the World Web came uh, like four or four years afterwards. So, so the new media, it, it, there's no long tradition of traditional media. The, the, the media came uh, when the, the digital revolution is happening. So it's the same bunch of people doing political work doing media work and the same bunch of people who experiment with internet and there's no no uh, traditional values of you know five generations of labor unions or something that that, that tells the civil society or the, the media people how you don't how, have inertia. how to behave. That we don't have inertia, yeah, that's right. But what, well we have more inertia than Estonia, of course. They were founded after internet. But but we don't have that much inertia. Yeah, hmm. yeah. yeah whereas We've been there for a while. Yeah, the the oldest. <laughs> no, no, no. Where the revolution was invented. No. <laughs> no. Where well, the bourgeois revolution was invented. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I was I was quite uh, impressed actually to see that Colombia uh -huh. in, uh, is actually much older and has been stable. Mm -hmm. It's the same republic as was founded. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Whereas France, uh, at some point during one hundred years, went through um, a bit more than. Through thirteen regime, major regime changes. Definitely. Uh, and I mean, we really can't decide. Mm -hmm. uh, although uh, I, I don't know if you've seen, but uh, quite a lot of people are calling for a new republic. Yeah. It will be our sixth. Yeah. Every every time I went to Paris, there's people who pitch this idea of the sixth republic. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's uh, you know maybe we need change. Yeah. I wouldn't interfere, but. And, uh, <laughs> That change can attention. be uh, more inclusive by using some of the technologies and uh, some of the ideas you're uh, developing here. Yeah, because these these things really, um, for me, is is constitutional, meaning not necessarily uh, requiring constitution change, but but it is it changes constitution between people's relationship and the government system. That's for sure. Um, and everybody now, at least in Taiwan, understand that the representational system isn't that representational anyway. Yeah. But we still need, of course, full-time lawmakers because they, they are good at it. Uh, so, so then how to balance these two it is the question. One, one way I was uh, considering was uh, to basically, so you have a public debate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have lawmakers mm -hmm. uh, using a system more like federalism in any because I don't know mm -hmm. how uh, the Taiwan works. In yeah, sure, but it's so pretty similar. Yeah. Um, so public debate, lawmakers, mm -hmm amend the law mm -hmm. and put it in mm -hmm. uh, legal form, mm -hmm. but the ultimate choice mm -hmm. is actually made by mm -hmm. a group of random citizens. Mm -hmm. So the random citizens are informed that by the debate, mm -hmm. by how the, the public mm -hmm. 
chose on like each amendment and such. And then you know the government says, well, the lawmakers say, well, we changed the law so that you know we didn't implement everything because you know, for example, uh, that's what happened for quite a few uh, amendments to mm -hmm. uh, to Republic of Mary, is mm -hmm. that they went against European treaties. That's right. And uh, you know they can't really like they don't have the uh, political power to to change this. Mm -hmm. So uh, so lawmakers change it, and then eventually uh, mm -hmm. the citizens choose. And we can actually even go a bit further, mm -hmm. which is uh, if the citizens choose, but the, the margin is too small, mm -hmm. um, then it's it says you know we, we want the public to be sure. Mm -hmm. If you win by fifty one percent, the following day you can lose by one percent. One percent, that's you right. Know, like, the population has you know, changes its opinion quite frequently, mm -hmm. not by much, mm -hmm. but you know, it oscillates. So mm -hmm. you want to have actually a, a strong mandate. Mm -hmm. And I think today, it, for politicians to mm -hmm. get elected, they can't have a strong mandate mm -hmm. because the whole political system is based around them winning by the closest margin by possible. Gerrymandering, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, true. Not gerrymandering, uh, which is harder in French presidential. Oh, really? Okay. Well, yeah, because you know we, we have the we uh, don't have you know an electoral college. Ah, you don't have the electoral college. No, we we just have uh, uh, Yeah, we do have some. But then more or less gerrymandering with you know uh, local elections and mm -hmm. stuff like that that is really not on the same mm -hmm. scale. Okay. Um, but uh, but we 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 do have okay. I'm losing where I was. <laughs> no, no, um, that, that's good. I I I understand the, the general point. Do, the, there is the point. Yeah. yeah. Was that? Yeah. Um, the, 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 we we had this bill in the in the parliament. The citizen participation and constitutional reform procedure of the law, and um, short. And, and yeah, very short. And the, the idea is is for a uh, civil civil society constitutional uh, deliberation. That's 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 island wide, and it's bottom up um, decides exactly the topics and the general consensus degree in which the members of the parliament are are acting more as. Proxies, as you as you said, uh, that they need to be bound uh, as lawmakers just to translate these uh, consensus into legal form, and then they, they need to do a good enough job so that it will eventually pass a a, a very high barrier of referendum, which will then enact a, a new constitution, essentially making a new republic uh, of Taiwan. And and the procedure was pretty nicely designed by constitutional scholars and, and so on. The the thing with this whole system. Is that it's not the technology. It, it, it's it's how many of the MPs and hard to dealers actually want to renew republic, which is why it's been sitting in the in the parliament for quite a quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we have a problem with um, I was discussing it with mm -hmm. uh, with my boss actually yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, who told me he saw some uh, one of our major politicians on the uh, weather on TV or mm -hmm. talking about a sort issue mm -hmm. and attacking it, like treating the other. Mm -hmm. With such disdain, and uh, there's maybe a reason for that is that sortition is basically the death of the political class. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. once you give power to the people, um, the ultimate power, maybe you have lawmakers, mm -hmm. and maybe they are elected. That is not absurd. Mm -hmm. But in the end, mm -hmm. the the real power lies with mm -hmm. the people, and that means the death of the professional political class. Yes, but w what I'm saying in this constitutional reform procedure law is that it says. That for each MP's uh, district constituents, uh, it randomly uh, sorts, it randomly draws samples one one man and one woman, uh, and uh, the overall sampling need to reflect the overall demographics of uh, in age and in other criteria of the, the, the national population. So 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 it actually mandates a sortation method that that will say you know these one hundred and forty six people you will. You say you say that. Uh it has to represent. Yeah. Do you mean that you check? Right, sure, of course. The, the idea is that, I, I think it's, it's modeled after the, the Britain, Columbia, in, in uh, British Columbia in Canada, um, where they had a very similar process before. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is that the MPs do represent the district, but in order to, to form this kind of button up assembly, uh, a random sample of a, a, a man and woman also from the district acts as a proxy, a representation of the representative 
of the district's okay. person. And, and these people um, first have a consensus, and then the MPs of that district, of course, can also participate, but, but in the sense that they are uh, merely enacting the legal translation of their consensus. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I can send you the link to the law. I think it's, it's, it's pretty well written. It's just the political mandate of it passing has, it. Is it in English? I don't know, but <laughs> I, I, think, I think machine translation is good enough that you, you get the basic idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's proposed to the parliament about exactly one year ago, but okay. there's, there's, um, we haven't seen a political mandate. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, yeah, okay, I have two more questions. Sure. It's fine. All three of you. <laughs> Uh, first thing is, yeah, um, here you had a, a bottom-up system. I mean, people mm -hmm. called for uh, such a platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, you had a movement yeah. that created... That demands this platform, really. Yeah, yeah. that demanded mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, you mentioned in uh, one of your other things the GOV as a consumer. Mm -hmm. And how the, basically the, the government has a need because it, it's, uh, it has needs. Mm -hmm. and it has to answer to the people. Mm -hmm. And so part of uh, the, your job is mm -hmm. uh, creating the tools mm -hmm. for the government to mm -hmm. answer to the world. That's right. Um, now, do you think that you could actually have uh, a top-down initiative because we're creating pop and uh, there might be a will of the people, but there isn't you know, an organized thing as mm -hmm. big as uh, mm -hmm. Do you think it, it can succeed? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, listen to the people, but the masses aren't really organized yet, mm -hmm. and propose a tool. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think it only happens when the legitimacy of the whole government system is in crisis. That's the should, I, should I wish for, uh, for a French candidate to be elected in France then? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We, we, we have a few uh -huh. who are very nice. Thankfully, one of them didn't get... Um, didn't get enough signatures, but he, he really wanted to send me the bond to visit. Wow. Yeah, we, we, we had uh, uh -huh. we had one who you know within six months of being president would have started World War Three. Uh huh. So in any case, um, I, I'll tell you the, the the idea of Mayor Cohen uh, uh, in the participatory budget when he became mayor uh, late twenty fourteen. He he's an independent. He belongs to no parties, just like our premier and the previous premier, mayor of uh, Taipei City, right? So, um, and and famously, he, he said at the point that the whole uh, city council is his opposition because because uh, we we don't have a we we have a direct vote to the mayor and then we have votes to the city council. Mm -hmm. This is unlike the, the say the French or Paris system where the mayor is simply the, the majority in the city council in some or the district council. So, um, so, and because he's independent, but most of his city council is partisan, um, it, it basically means that the entire city council doesn't have to listen or have to, to, to agree with what the mayor says. So by doing participatory budget and by doing all sorts of direct connections between the, the city uh, public servants and the, the public, the citizens essentially, um, his shortcoming, uh, the, the relationship between an independent mayor and the citizens. And, and it did cause backlash uh, in the city council, but it couldn't really overturn the entire participatory budget idea. So, so it, it now becomes a, a kind of uh, balance between yeah, the partisan. When you talk about the participatory budget, mm -hmm. um, yeah. what exactly do you mean by that? We have mm -hmm. a yeah, participatory like, budget yeah. in Paris. Right, it's like Is that the same thing? Very, very, very similar because we also had a citywide campaign and also very every district sets its own participation methods and uh, there's a visualization. Uh, mm -hmm. Conveniently, the website address is budget.taipei. How um, much uh, of the budget is actually? And, um, um, and then you, you can see... the percentage of the budget, of the city budget? Um, let's see. Yeah, let's see what, what they are doing. Um, So it's Mayor Coast starts saying for the first year it's going to be twelve point five million euros. Um, okay. 
12.5 million euros for the first year. Yeah. I don't know what Taipei's budget is. Uh, well, it is, it is, uh, I'm, I'm just doing math, but I really should let the calculator do it. Uh, uh, yeah, so percentage wise, it's, More or less. it's point, point three percent. But it's not fair because a lot of this is maintenance budget that the, yeah. that the city doesn't have a discretion anyway. Yeah. Right, so out of the investment uh, budget, I think it's it's a higher amount. Let me get you the numbers. Um, right, so in any case, it's it's accompanied by by this diagram of how much went to the education, how much went to social welfare, and so on, and whether these things are being this is one project removed. Yeah, this is one project, and uh, not one PB project, one city project. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking yeah. about the circles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Each circle is a project. Uh, it's a it's a group of project, uh, and then you can drill down, and then look basically the entire um, report that they they sent to the uh, the city council. So so for people who are interested in only the the transport and so on, uh, you can see the details of the entire. Uh, city budget basically, but the idea is that um, during the PB, um, the the first three weeks or so, this uh, every single item had a discussion forum next to it, so that people can ask questions. And after three weeks, all the public servants of all the cities, um, bureaus went on and replied to every single one of them. So basically, it's a Q and A platform for the existing budget, so that people can be more informed when they're proposing ideas. Do the um yeah, the people could propose ideas that are not already done, that are really innovative, and they know how to fit it into the existing budget structure. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 I am quite, uh, quite, quite in favor of uh, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think the Paris uh, budget is a bit higher in mm -hmm. proportion. Yes. might have been something like 20% of the investment mm -hmm. budget, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll have to check out. Is mm -hmm. something burning? No, maybe the 3D printer is not <laughs> working. Um, yeah, so you, you said you had another question? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, just to add. Uh, what do you think of the potential impact of the, well, public debate platforms which are not public but which are private and uh, by the, the effects of uh, you know mm -hmm. Facebook uh, or mm -hmm. whatever would you to, uh, mm -hmm. should the state try to regulate uh, no well there, there's there's al always the private sphere where people talk about non-policy issues right yeah. so it's, it's silly to, to to regulate people's private sphere um, but but of course people use Facebook now also as a public discussion forum and it's very hard to draw the line and, and people uh, get information mm -hmm. I mean, you, you we, we saw a lot of people mm -hmm. talking about fake news That's at, right. uh, at the mm -hmm. at Saturday meeting mm -hmm. and, uh, and major tech companies mm -hmm. control the information in a way mm -hmm. uh, which can completely change mm -hmm. the public debate of course of course and then which is why they are also now self-regulated because they don't want to lose legitimacy altogether, right? So they need to put some balancing, you know, fact-checking next to the news and so on. And we, we welcome these efforts, but we will not say that we regulate this effort. It would be silly. Uh, of course, by fact-checking, they need, uh, like, uh, actual factual information in short, one URL per fact form and so on. And this is something that the government can help prepare for things that we originate. But we're not special in any way. Any any affected party, anyone who says they are de being defamed or all, should be uh, empowered to create this kind of instant clarifications. Um, and but but I think ultimately it's a it's a matter of self regulation. And um, the thing that we have and the Facebook doesn't is that we, we are we have the potential to be a, a recursive public, in the sense that our platforms rules, our platforms con con constitutional. Um, principles and everything it could be affected by people's input and our 
algorithms, the police visualization, everything is there for people to change, and they did change it. And I think uh, in the long run, it, it is it may be more effective than Facebook, but mm -hmm. but we don't know. So yeah. so it, it yeah it pays to try. One thing is that I'm afraid of such technologies like Facebook mm -hmm. or Google, and I think mm -hmm. at some point um, there there could be a role of the states to uh, beef up which would be unfair competition. But mm -hmm. uh, at some point when uh, when the private power becomes mm -hmm. too big. Uh, it becomes hard for the public mm -hmm. to uh, to keep it in check, and one way of doing that is just to create uh, an open source mm -hmm. and viable alternative, mm -hmm. like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Except your thing is mm -hmm. just for the public deliberation. Mm -hmm. But if someone were to create mm -hmm. a state-sponsored mm -hmm. search engine akin to mm -hmm. Google, mm -hmm. uh, that might be an idea mm -hmm. to you know eventually give give, give the uh, ultimate to uh, to the stakeholders because at some point it becomes a public good. Mm -hmm. Google is a public good because it affects society so much mm -hmm. that it is uh, grave mm -hmm. if people can't control what's happening and if it's something too obscure. Mm -hmm. The problem is the efficiency of Google mm -hmm. partially relies on the fact that its algorithms are secret. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, personally, I use DuckDuckGo, but. <laughs> In, yeah, yeah. In, in any case, um, I, I don't think it's just algorithm though, it's the user contributed content that, that allows Google to, to see what's important and what's not important with the data also, not just the algorithm. Given exactly the same algorithm, but none of the data that Google gains by, by their, its telemetrics and, um, and especially uh, user input, it, it wouldn't be possible to, to tune the algorithm uh, as they did. I mostly meant to uh, like the, the, the problem if the Google algorithm went public is that people could, you know, change their website to uh, to game it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that's like it's harder to game when it's mm -hmm. it when it's secret. Mm -hmm. The problem is, you know, it's easier to. Well, but but I mean, they have incorporated so much machine learning component in such that even if they publish the algorithm, but not the, the you know the actual models that's being trained. Uh, it's hard to game it anyway because it's mm -hmm. it's like alternate form of intelligence now, <laughs> and and we can't very easily get a human understandable explanation of why it thinks mm -hmm. this way. Well, we can get it printed out, but it would take five hundred years to read through it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think that's our yeah, time. That's, that's our time. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it was very enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for seeing me. Yeah. And giving me the opportunity.